All right, I think uh, everyone is seeing this. Um, so again, I want to talk a little bit about uh, electrical and computer engineering. Um, now, I know you you are already, you applied and uh, you're in this program, so you know probably what electrical and computer engineering means. But again, I, I want to highlight a few things I think you may find interesting. Um, and then I guess the most important question is, uh, why would you want to study EC at IIT? I think that's the most critical question. And hopefully, again, I will have some uh, information that um, that will be very useful for you. Um, we will talk about some department information, how many credits are required, how many, again, uh, courses per semester, who are the faculty, um, and how many students are in this program, etc. So we'll talk about those. Um, I'll talk about, you know, some program specialties. I think those are very important because, as you know, electrical and computer engineering, it's a very broad field. Um, there's so many different uh, specializations, um, and we have a very structured program where you can actually choose um, particular area, and then you can take courses in, 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 in that field. So we will help you with that. Um, and then we'll talk about, again, um, the introduction to profession, uh, which is a very fun, very exciting course uh, in your very first semester, starting uh, right off the start in, in the fall semester in September, uh, actually August. Um, it, it's great experience, um, and we'll talk about it. And then I have a little bit more information about, again, maybe extracurricular activities like research and student organizations, uh, clubs, um, and basically that's pretty much it for our presentation. And then again, we'll be happy to answer your questions. All right, so let me skip some of these animation stuff, but um, I think the key thing about electrical and computer engineering um, is uh, the different fields you can end up working at, right? I mean, you, you can be someone working on robotics, you can be some electrical engineer that's designing integrated you know, circuits, chips, CPUs, but you may be also someone who is working on uh, next generation of energy, right? Renewable energy, um, you know, power distribution, power systems. So think about the scale. One of them is the whole maybe continent, right? The North American continent. You're thinking about where to put all these power generators, how to distribute the power uh, and energy. And then you may also think about integrated circuit where you know, everything is nanoscale. You're putting maybe 10 billion transistors on one chip, uh, which is almost the size of my nail, right? Um, so completely different uh, topics and fields, but they are electrical engineers. So there is way, way too much, um, again, um, career path uh, in, in this one, um, in, in electrical and computer engineering. So I think that's what's exciting about it. Um, and again, many different fields. Um, and also you may consider uh, maybe having an electrical or computer engineering degree as your starting point. So you may uh, easily end up maybe uh, studying business, studying law, uh, medicine. Um, it's, it's very common. Uh, we have people who are, you know, who studied electrical and computer engineering um, and pursue the path in uh, law, basically looking at patents, right? Um, that, that's a, you know, a great opportunity, great career. Um, medicine, um, certainly, um, you know, uh, there's lots of, uh, you know, uh, interesting stuff happening at, uh, in electrical engineering field, signal processing, which can help you with uh, medicine uh, degree. So again, uh, this could be a starting point. Um, and as I said, we have specializations, program tracks um, in our undergrad programs. So um, based on what you want to do in, in your future, um, your advisor, um, the, your professors will help you guide uh, in, in your special junior and senior year in terms of course selections, electives. Um, so you can actually define your path, okay? Um, I have this from US News and World Report. Um, this was, I think a year ago. I don't think there's any more recent one. So this is the light, latest um, and they, I think a couple of years ago, they started putting these um, starting salaries um, and classified by measure. Um, and by the way, this information is um, specific to IIT. I mean, this, this is not an average number from all electrical and computer engineering. This is the number that they got from survey with our own students. Um, and if you look at it, um, right up the top uh, is computer engineering, um, 78,500, uh, and then right after electric, uh, biomedical and then uh, follows electrical engineering. So again, just to give you an idea in, in terms of, um, again, our own students, uh, you know, uh, starting salary information uh, from US News and World Report. So again, um, it's a great career. Um, I mean, not just because of the compensation, 
but because of how exciting the field is, I think um, it, it really is a great career. Um, let's talk about why IIT, right? Um, again, I think I will try to highlight a few things. Um, certainly, uh, reputation and history. I mean, we our history goes more than 100 years. Uh, so very well established, um, well reputed, um, you know, um, department. Um, and we have great you know, faculty, uh, distinguished EC faculty. Um, again, I'll give you some numbers. We have 22 uh, full, uh, full-time uh, tenure track uh, and tenured uh, professors uh, and also two full-time instructors. So you're looking at about 20, 24, 25 full-time faculty uh, and a very reasonable size of the uh, student body around 400 to 500. Uh, so very good ratio in terms of student to faculty ratio. So, so what I try to say, uh, what I try to mean by that is um, the students get a very personal education. Um, we are not a large, you know, um, department. We are not a large institution. Um, the students get to experience uh, everything, I think, in more personal way. Um, you can easily drop by and talk to the professors. Obviously, not with the COVID situation, but um, in normal times, um, you, you will be interacting with the professors, you know, um, very easily. We are very, our door. Oh, uh, we have an open door policy uh, and you can basically talk to us uh, anytime you want. Um, other stuff, again, uh, we, we are very hands-on, very practical, um, you know, in terms of uh, curriculum. Uh, there's gonna be lots of opportunity for research, uh, undergrad research, uh, project-based courses, iPro, um, co-ops. Uh, again, we don't have a systematic uh, policy for internship, but almost all our students do you know, uh, internships. Uh, so that, that's certainly uh, a great uh, opportunity. Um, and as I said, salary wise, um, again, we are an engineering school, we are a technical school, um, and they are very high in demand uh, in, in terms of placement uh, and also in terms of their compensation. Um, really, this is a very desired, uh, you know, uh, department. Um, I mentioned about our reputation and our history, um, and I said we go more than 100 years uh, I think the names change a little bit, uh, but um, we can trace back all the way to Lee De Forest. Um, basically, uh, he's known as the uh, father of radio because he invented the uh, vacuum tubes. Um, now, if you're an audiophile, uh, you may be still using some of those vacuum tubes, which were, again, a precursor to tra transistors. And then we have um, Marvin Cameras, uh, and I think some of you may even apply for uh, the scholarship under his name, Cameras Scholarship. Um, and he's known as the father of magnetic tape recording. Uh, and if you're, I guess, as old as me, you would remember the cassette uh, players, the tape players from 80s. Um, and then Martin Cooper, uh, obviously, uh, you probably may have heard his name. Uh, he's known as inventor of the cell phone. Uh, I think he did this in the uh, late 70s while he was working at Motorola uh, in Chicago. But of course, he's, uh, he has a Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degree from our department. Uh, and more recently, uh, we have Rohit Prasad. Um, again, maybe you don't know his name, but uh, everybody knows Alexa, uh, right? Um, and he's pretty much known as the, uh, the key figure behind Alexa. Um, and he's kind of recent graduate, uh, 1999. And again, um, it, it's kind of very curious because I, I checked his uh, master's thesis and um, Big surprise, his master's thesis is about speech recognition. <laughs> um, so obviously um, that's where he started his career. Uh, and then of course uh, he introduced AI and combined it with uh, speech recognition. And now of course, um, Alexa is doing everything, right? It's our self uh, assistant, um, you know, AI. So again, so many examples. Again, we have many, many other examples, but uh, who knows, maybe uh, your name will be here um, in, in the next 10 years. Uh, we will have another picture um, with some really important innovation. So, so again, we are very proud, uh, very proud. And I have to mention, uh, Rohit is very active um, and basically is part of our uh, advisory board uh, for the EC department and also Armour College. So um, we are very proud to have him. All right, so a little bit more information about the department. Um, so we have, again, as I said, about 24 faculty right now, um, 22 of them are tenured. Um, and out of this, um, you know, 24 uh, full-time faculty, seven 
are actually endowed chairs. So that's basically the highest rank as a professor, um, you know, extremely well reputed and basically recognized by um, peers in the university. So again, that's a very, very high ratio. Um, six of them are IEEE fellows. IEEE, um, again, you may have heard about it. It's world's largest professional organization, Institute for uh, Electrical and Electronics Engineers, international um, organization. Um, so again, you know, uh, one fourth, a quarter of the you know, department is our uh, IEEE fellow. Um, we have also uh, biomedical uh, engineering fellows, two of them, National Academy of Engineers, Academy of Inventors, a bunch of career awards, um, teaching awards. And I think if I'm not mistaken, for the last four years in a row, we received uh, teaching awards from the university. Um, again, that again shows you uh, at least in one way, how, again, how, uh, how good you know, the faculty is for teaching. Um, Zygma Zai is for research. Again, we have both at the, um, again, uh, the faculty level and also student level research awards uh, on, on the Zygma Zai. Measure research awards about uh, four million for the last year. Again, that money is important because that money is used for again student supports, right? Um, at graduate level, PhD level, and also undergrad level as well. So that that's very important. Uh, we have three staff members, key members. Uh, Janet Katino, you will probably interact with her, or you may have already interacted with her. She's our academic program coordinator. Darnita uh, uh, Murphy, administrative associate. Uh, and Wang Jie, so when you join us, um, when you start going to the labs, you will of course meet Wang Jie, um, and he's in charge of running our labs. Um, in terms of some numbers, we have about, again, close to 500 students total, um, and a slight majority is for undergrad, 290, uh, and 200 uh, is for the graduate students, uh, including, again, um, you know, PhD programs as well. So if you want to, you can go all the way uh, to the PhD um, and finish your degree, get a doctoral uh, degree as well. All right, so we offer right now three degree programs, computer engineering, uh, electrical engineering, and quite new about two years now, uh, computer and cybersecurity engineering. So uh, those are the three uh, main uh, degree programs we have at the Bachelor of Science level. Uh, there's also a dual degree uh, for computer and uh, double E. Um, later, I, I, I will talk about uh, the co-terminal options. That's basically um, accelerated masters. Uh, so you combine your Bachelor of Science with Master of Science and finish earlier uh, and also pay less. Uh, so you share some credits. It's a very attractive uh, option for uh, students. Um, again, I'll talk about it as well later. Uh, you're looking at about 130 credits uh, roughly um, for both of all of these degree programs. Um, and you're looking at, again, each course about three to four credits. Typically four credits are those with the labs. Uh, and you're looking at um, around five courses per semester. Um, and you finish in, again, about eight semesters, four years, right? Um, we do accept AP credits, um, community college credits. Uh, so those are uh, certainly possible. Uh, in fact, even if after you join us, um, you, some students actually do it in summer, um, do some you know, uh, additional coursework at community college and they are transferred as well. Um, again, we, we have a great ratio, student to faculty ratio, um, as I mentioned. Um, and that's how I think I can claim that we have very personal education for uh, students um, because you can interact with us uh, very easily. Um, again, uh, you will find us in the campus uh, and we will be available for you, okay? Again, I have this uh, flow chart. It's, I know it's gonna be very complicated to discuss it now, but one thing I wanna mention here, again, this is for the CP. I have another one for EE, but uh, if you start from top and if you go down, um, again, this is year one, year two, year three, year four. Um, and what you will see uh, is that your first year Mostly it's, uh, general education courses, math and science uh, and some humanities, but there will be one introduction to profession course, EC100. So we will talk about it today. Um, and some programming courses from CS department. And then second year, you start your real engineering coursework, um, lab courses, uh, circuit classes, uh, right there, EC courses. Um, so that's gonna be starting around your second year. And then, in your junior and senior, you will see there is a bunch of elective courses, especially in your 
senior, if you look here, this is an elective, this is elective, another elective, another elective, 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 professional EC elective. So basically what this tells you is that students will have lots of different options for them in, in terms of what courses they wanna choose, right? Um, and what we do is we actually guide you in terms of maybe specializing in different areas. So you may be interested in becoming maybe um, in, in having a career in wireless communications, right? So we will tell you, okay, here are the coursework uh, you can choose as your electives. So that will prepare you for your, uh, let's say, wireless communication career, right? Some other student may say power systems, then we will guide them for, again, power system related courses, right? Uh, and you can also have maybe multiple specializations, that's fine. So you can actually um, expose yourself to multiple areas and that's certainly fine as well. Uh, but if someone wants to, again, focus on a single area, um, they can certainly do it. And those are, we call as um, the program tracks. Um, and here's the most recent list. So you have about eight tracks, uh, starting from, again, artificial intelligence, robotics, all the way to signal image processing and machine learning, right? Um, and again, we have a, a, a guide for each of these tracks with the courses listed um, and the students, they discuss it with their advisors. Uh, and again, around your junior year, um, you will start again, uh, making some decisions uh, in terms of what track to follow, right? Uh, and that I think is very healthy uh, and it kind of gives you, right before even you do any coursework, you know, uh, that if you follow these certain tracks, uh, certain coursework, um, you may pursue a career path in, in, in that area, right? So I think that's very important. All right, um, let me talk about your very first semester. Um, and again, as I said, first semester, any engineering school, if you look at their coursework, it's gonna be all about math, physics, some humanity course, some programming course, right? And then you will see one, um, engineering course, let's say in our case, electrical and computer engineering course, uh, ITP course, right? Um, so in EC100, um, we actually try to be a little bit different. Um, so uh, it's not like a regular course where, you know, there's a textbook and you have exams. No, it's exactly the opposite. So we don't actually use a, uh, we have some books, but it's not, I wouldn't call it textbook. Um, and there, we don't actually have exams. Uh, so everything pretty much happens in, in the lab. Okay, so it's a laboratory course and also lecture. Um, and again, we work with teams. So students actually um, team up uh, in the lab um, and they work on some open-ended problems. Uh, and this is usually, it happens in terms of robotics uh, using some microcontrollers. Um, and some Lego kits. Um, so again, I'll show you some examples there, but again, a couple of things to keep in mind. Again, we, we usually don't provide any solutions. So students have to do their own, come up with their own solutions as a team. Um, and these are real engineering problems. So they have to figure, figure it out with practice and some you know, uh, experiments. Um, we pay real attention to communication. So th there will be some presentations, written reports, uh, and there will be some peer evaluations from you know, your fellow students. Uh, so in, in the same lab session. Um, and another very interesting thing about this course is uh, we assign several uh, weeks, uh, several sessions to our guests. And these guests could be from companies, uh, from industry, or they can come from uh, within our own department. Uh, some professors may join us and they will talk about their uh, expertise, um, their, let's say, field, uh, if they're coming from industry. If it's a professor, they will talk about their research area um, and they will basically help you understand if you pursue their path, um, what kind of options you have in, in terms of career, right? Um, and I think these are really exciting, um, you know, um, presentations typically. I know students really look forward to it. Um, and again, we, we typically have uh, at least two or three of these um, every semester at the end of the semester. Um, as I said, this is a typically a robotics lab. Um, and that means you will actually build your robot um, and you can see some Lego parts here. Uh, you will also have a microcontroller uh, attached to it. Uh, it's hard to see it here, but uh, it's right here on the top. Um, and you basically learn how to, again, um, program this microcontroller, build your Lego kit, your robot, 
um, and interact with sensors. Um, there are several different sensor options and, and basically compete because again, we will have every month uh, a competition. So three competitions uh, in one semester. Um, and again, uh, it's gonna be a team effort. Um, and it, it's really fun because we do competition sessions in every lab session and then the winning groups actually compete on uh, the next week um, and for the final round. Um, and, and of course the winners get a bonus. Uh, they actually can get better grades um, by winning the competition. Um, I think I have a few figures, uh, sorry, videos here. So let me try to show it here. Give me one second and I'll bring up my, all right, I think you should be able to see this. Uh, now I don't have audio, you don't, we don't need audio, but this first one, is um, basically a robot is designed to basically track, a, again, um, a path, in this case, a white uh, tape path, right? So it's using some kind of light sensor, uh, infrared sensor, um, and let's see. And uh, the competition is basically, they have to finish the path um, in the shortest amount of time possible. So again, they have to go all the way from the start to the end uh, and we time it. And you can see this is, very fast, although I have to say it's a little bit cheating, uh, some of the corners, but uh, certainly well done. Uh, so that was one competition. Again, uh, the, so you, you will work on this for about three weeks uh, as a group, uh, about three students. And then at the end of the uh, three weeks, the next week, we will have the competition. So every team uh, competes, we time it, uh, and we basically have a winner. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is slightly different. Um, I think I can make this up. Interesting. Well, I couldn't turn off the audio. So this one, um, students don't know the maze layout. Uh, and basically this robot has to find the exit in the shortest amount of time. And again, in this case, uh, let me. I know if you were able to see the video because I got an error message, but uh, let me try this one without audio. Okay. So here's another one. Uh, so this one. Uh, actually, the first one I was trying to show um, the, the robot couldn't find the exit, but this one, it is doing it. Um, and the reason, if you look at this, uh, it's very smart. Uh, so if you're in a maze, one thing you can probably do is always use the same side turns, right? So this robot is actually using always right turn and eventually uh, it does find um, the exit uh, in, in a very short amount of time. Now, the, the design uses a bunch of sensors, touch sensors, uh, and um, basically detects the objects, and then they have to recover from all these objects and eventually navigate um, towards the exit. But it, it's really fun, um, these activities. Now, we are up upgrading some of uh, the components and you know devices in our lab, so there's going to be a different experience um, you know, next semester. But the idea is going to be the same. There's going to be some um, you know, challenge, there's going to be some teamwork, and you will compete. Uh, and we will change the, again, competition every month. Uh, so it's really fun event. As I said, there's no exam. It's all about this lab work uh, and how well you're working in, in the lab with others. So, so it's really fun. So let me go back to my presentation. A um, Couple of other things I wanna highlight here. So in addition to, again, uh, the ITP course, um, we also have, uh, this is kind of unique to IIT, we call it, multidisciplinary interprofessional courses or IPRO courses. So this is something uh, every IIT student has to do twice, IPRO 1 and IPRO 2. And it's again a teamwork, but it's a, on a larger scale. So you may even end up with up to 15 students in the same team. Um, and again, there are a bunch of different, very exciting projects. I put down what is available, some partially what is available in the fall semester. I don't know if you can read it, but I can see first one, energy and environment, environmental innovation, um, water and urban living. Um, what else? Uh, developing antimatter gravity interferometer. So that looks like a Star Trek type uh, project. 
uh, remote telescope uh, commissioning, um, real world research and development experience, um, electrical energy efficiency, I guess that's more suitable for EE. So you can choose again, uh, the projects based on your interest. Um, and again, these are semester long projects and you have to do it twice in your, uh, again, uh, studies uh, in four years, okay? So these are really fun, very hands-on um, projects. Um, in addition to the coursework, again, extracurricular activities, um, just in our department, we have very, very active student groups. We have an IEEE student branch. Uh, we have an IEEE uh, Honor Society at Takapanu. We have Cyberhawks dealing with the security, cybersecurity. We have formal SAE, uh, basically building, uh, again, race cars, electric, uh, you know, race cars, um, and also robot mining team. So again, these are very, very active teams, um, usually not just from our department, other departments also participate. Uh, but again, if you want to, again, join the fund, uh, you can certainly seek out these uh, student organizations. Um, after your degree, what happens? Um, as I said, you have many, many options, uh, almost any IT company, um, you will have opportunities. Um, we have students, um, I mean, if you ask me, my area is uh, circuit design, um, chip designs, system on a chip. Uh, I, I know students who are hired by Intel, AMD. Um, if you ask some other professor, um, they will give you other examples. Um, so again, electrical and computer engineering, it's a great area. Um, and again, our students are really, um, in terms of their employment and compensation, um, it, it's been really great, I think. So a um, couple other things, I, as I said earlier, um, we do offer co-terminal degrees. Um, so what that means is it's an accelerated master's. Uh, so you're enrolled into both undergrad and grad degree same time, uh, and you receive them both concurrently. Um, so in about five years, you get uh, both degrees. Um, and the reason it works fast is because you're sharing credits. Uh, so about you know, about, I would say three courses, about eight credits are shared. Uh, so you're not paying that extra eight credits uh, and that's basically shared from undergrad. Um, and that helps you also, you know, finish earlier. Um, there are some requirements. So you need a GPA 3.0 uh, and this is something you have to decide, not now, but around junior year, uh, start of the junior year. So you have to do at least 60 credits of uh, undergrad coursework um, and if you satisfy those requirements, um, you can talk to your advisor and you can choose your uh, co-terminal degree. Uh, and I think that's another incentive to put your GPA high. Um, again, 3.0, that's a very good uh, benchmark. Uh, now, what are the options for accelerated masters? Um, these are listed right now officially. Uh, so you may have a computer engineering, bachelor of science. You can combine it with computer engineering or vice versa. Um, you may also do biomedical engineering and, you know, biomedical image. So there are different options, but um, right now, actually, this is even more open. Uh, students actually can propose. So you may, if you want to do electrical engineering and then master of science in computer science, those are also can be approved. Um, but again, just to give you an idea, different combinations are possible. Again, don't worry about it right now. It's an option. Uh, by the time you finish 60 credits around the start of junior year, you can think about this. Um, and I think this is a great, great option. And I, I know many of our students are actually pursuing it. Uh, so they, they end up graduating with both Bachelor of Science and a Master of Science degree. So very, very useful. Um, the last thing I wanna mention about, again, you, we're talking about practical work, hands-on work. Um, on, on that issue, this is extracurricular, is that at Armour College, we have engineering themes relating to, again, four, very fundamental issues that we face, right? Water, health, energy, and security. So we want students to be aware of all these issues. Um, so you can actually, uh, optionally, you can pursue uh, one of these engineering things in, in your studies, right? So um, you will be able to participate in many events, workshops, you know, um, networking events, uh, volunteering options, field trips, right? Um, and what that happened, uh, the way it works is that um, you will be building a portfolio, okay? So you will have an online portfolio where all your participations are tracked. So you go to a job interview saying, well, again, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, I've done this work uh, and I've done also an engineering theme on let's say security. Um, and that may help you maybe, you know, secure that job, right? Uh, so 
again, this is optional, but I think it's a great, great uh, extracurricular activity for students. Um, and under this engineering theme, you can also be part of a research project. Um, they come actually in two forms, pure and mentored uh, innovation and development mind. Um, so the way this works is that you approach one professor and you come up with a proposal, not long, like five page proposal at the start of the semester and you submit it to Armour College. And if they like your idea, uh, if it's feasible, they actually support your work. So they will give you stipends. So they will pay you and you will work with professor one semester long uh, on, on that particular project uh, relating to engineering themes. Um, and they're not earning credits, uh, but this is a great experience uh, working with you know professor and other grad graduate students maybe, um, and also stipend, uh, not much, but still, uh, I think it's still important. Um, and it may help you with maybe graduate studies. So uh, any student is eligible for this. Um, again, you have to talk to the uh, professors and again, it's a one-on-one -on -one project typically, um, and you can do it multiple times. So again, just be aware of this. I think it, it's a great uh, opportunity for students. Um, again, I'll go through this very fast. Uh, in terms of, again, research areas um, in the department, we have energy and power systems, intelligence systems, embedded computing, microelectronics, computing system, again, very broad topics, signal and image processing, wireless networks and communication. So these are the main areas uh, that uh, we do research. Uh, every professor in the department have a research expertise, research lab. Uh, so you can actually work with them on, on any of these topics uh, based on your interest, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna stop here. I know I talked too much, 40 minutes already, but if you're interested in our, again, uh, learning more, you can look at these web links uh, and also you can reach out to either Professor Ja or uh, myself. Uh, our email addresses are here. And with that, I'm gonna stop and find out what's happening on the chat. Uh, <laughs> I know there's a bunch of, um, I think questions were coming up, but again, if somebody wants to ask a question, uh, feel free to unmute, unmute yourself um, and we'll be happy to answer. Dr. Rupal? Yes. So would a five-year co-terminal degree with an MS in computer engineering, MS in AI and a BS in computer engineering, would that be a good plan? Yes, yes, certainly. So you will be starting with BS in computer engineering and then your master's would be AI um, and that certainly works. Um, you know, one thing of course we can help you with uh, in, in that arrangement is your fourth year and to some degree, even junior year uh, elective courses, we can arrange it so that it will prepare you for your master's as well. So, uh, but yeah, that's a very good combination. Um, any other questions? So with the quarter mill, the exact reason why you, you finish earlier is because you're sharing about eight credits uh, I think that's our uh, limit, but that's about uh, three courses. So that will be, um, you can subtract that from your master's, right? So if you're thinking about 32 credits for master's, now you're talking about only 24 credits. Okay, so that's exactly the reason why you can end up uh, finishing it earlier. And also, you know, you pay less, right? Tuition, you don't have to pay. But again, uh, don't worry about it right now. It's something you have to decide later uh, down the road, okay? I have another question about the uh, the co-terminal uh, degree. Mm -hmm. um, how would the taking taking the co-terminal option affect the amount of electives that you can take? Um, so I think what happens is that uh, the your advisor, because every student will have an academic advisor, so you have to sit down and the academic advisor will tell you, okay, if you are in pursuit of this master's degree, right? there will be some courses that you may, uh, you know, that may help you with, you know, that specific program in the master's level. So from that, I guess you can say that, yes, your electives will be more tailored towards your master's degree, right? I guess that makes sense. Um, now, if you want to be a little bit separated in terms of your master's, I think you may just keep those shared credits relating to the master's, 
the rest could be something maybe unrelated, but I wouldn't advise for that. I, I think the, the best practice would be choosing your electives in, in your targeted master's program, right? So that you, you will have a better time in your master's. Uh, so the reason that we could say one year uh, if we do co-terminal within uh, the same department uh, because uh, you could uh, you easily fulfill uh, the background uh, prerequisite. So for example, if you do a bachelor in one school and then you move to a second a different school for a master degree, if you take some 500 graduate level courses, usually there are some prerequisite. And uh, if you don't have a background, you have to take undergraduate course to serve as a background. But since you are taking both degree within IIT and uh, when we mentor you toward the co-terminal, uh, so we want to make sure that, you know, in uh, your undergraduate, you already prepare for your master. So you don't have to uh, just sort of uh, uh, make up, you know, those undergraduate courses to provide you the adequate uh, background. So that's the reason we could say one year. Uh, there's a question about uh, from Matt. Um, so would the dual degree BS, BS, um, uh, the EC program have any advantage over the co-terminal? Uh, that's my personal opinion, but the answer is no. There is really no uh, advantage of having a dual degree Bachelor of Science right now um, when you compare it to a co-terminal uh, BS and Master's, I think. Um, so, um, so again, I think Technically, uh, the dual degree, you can do it in nine semesters, I think. So if you're in a hurry, you can do it maybe, you know, slightly earlier than the, you know, uh, co-thermal co program. But I think the, you know, companies are looking more for graduate uh, degrees uh, compared to a dual degree Bachelor of Science. So um, I think that's pretty much what I would advise. Uh, go for the co-thermal. But again, that, that's my personal uh, position, so. Uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Aruklu. Uh, so I guess before we had a co-terminal degree, uh, we do have a students uh, taking dual degree. But once we had a co-terminal, uh, all students are actually moved to co-terminal. Uh, yeah. We see almost none actually taking very, degree. Very, very rare, right? Very now. rare, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think I mentioned this, but Right now uh, at IIT, um, the students actually can propose the combination, what master's and what bachelor's of science um, degree will be in, in your accelerated master's. Uh, as long as the departments involved agree and approve, uh, students can actually propose that. So it doesn't have to be in the EC department or in the same department. So you, you can have combinations from other departments as well. Um, any other questions, anything about the curriculum? Anything uh, about Chicago, IIT, location? I don't know where people are coming from. But, um, I think they are, I don't see any international. I think these are mostly domestic students, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Chicago, a re previous resident, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be good welcome you back. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Yeah. Anything else you want us to talk about? Um, I guess I can say a few things about the, um, the uh, physical location. So in terms of the campus, of course, we are very close to the downtown. Um, you know, we have, a, again, I think two train lines um, connecting us to, again, the downtown. So it's very easy to reach. Um, and I, I guess that's why we call ourselves an urban university, right? Uh, we are in, in a very major city um, and the campus is, uh, very famous uh, for its architecture, right? Um, you probably about heard about it. Um, Niels van der Rohe is the architect who designed our campus. Um, and our summer buildings are um, historical landmarks. Um, I think we have stamps of the buildings. Um, one thing I have to complain is uh, having any repair is very difficult because you have to get permission. <laughs> uh, but Again, we are very proud uh, and we have brand new uh, buildings, uh, innovation center. Um, it's very futuristic. Um, you have to come and see it if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's really nice. And that building is actually for student projects, etc. So um, again, uh, I think it's really exciting. Does Armour keep in touch with local employers to make sure engineering coursework is keeping up with in industry? I mean, that's a great question. Um, thank you for asking that. Um, yes. So. 
I think one example I would say is that, as I said, we have advisor board, right? Uh, department have advisor board. And these are all engineers. And most of them are actually from our department. Uh, but of course, they are very senior, uh, at very good position in their company and in institutions. Um, so we talk to them very frequently. Uh, and this comes up a lot. So in terms of uh, curriculum, just very recently, we had our meeting. And one of them is actually working at Intel. Um, and the discussion was actually, are we up to date in terms of our coursework in circuit design, right? Uh, are we training our students based on what, let's say, companies like Intel are looking for, right? So we had that discussion um, and he's gonna review our material um, and bring us some feedback. So the answer to your question, this is extremely important. And yes, uh, certainly we're doing it. Uh, and I think in our course, uh, in our curriculum, um, pretty much every course is updated very frequently. Maybe not at the second year, uh, those are fundamental circuit courses, but when you go to junior and senior, almost every course needs to be updated uh, very frequently because things change a lot in our field, right? I mean, electrical and computer engineering, uh, if you teach stuff from 10 years ago, <laughs> you know, you're way behind the curve. Um, again, I can give you one example in, 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 our, in my field, you know, circuit design. Um, and we're teaching, of course, transistor design uh, and, you know, integrated circuits. Um, and there has been a big shift in recent years going from regular CMOS transistors to FinFET transistors. Um, so we're not teaching those new you know, transistor types, right? Uh, and that's pretty much the same on other courses. So we, we update them um, very frequently um, so that when students graduate, um, they, they actually know, you know the, the stuff that the companies are looking for. But yeah, I mean, this is very important. Yeah. Yeah, I want to add uh, one thing. We have a seminar series uh, for each semester. So we will invite uh, the researchers from uh, the uh, companies and then they will come and uh, give talk, uh, basically talk about uh, the current technologies and then uh, what's the ex expectations for a uh, new graduate. Uh, so students get exposure of uh, how uh, industry work and then also would have idea um, uh, what current uh, uh, research are going on in the industry. And also we, I think I said it also in the presentation, EC100, we do invite, um, you know, industry, uh, uh, you know, people as well. So they talk about their experience. What is it to be a, let's say, Comet engineer, right? Electrical engineer working at Comet, right? Um, so they talk about their experience. So those are also very useful. Mm -hmm. um, Julio, I think, has a question. Uh, what companies or places do EC graduates tend to work? It's a very difficult question. Um, I mean, if you ask some power engineer, um, you know, power electronics engineer, they will tell you maybe Tesla. I mean, we have students hired by Tesla for you know, those companies working on electric vehicles because that's a very hot area, very in demand, and we have a cutting edge research in our department. Um, if you ask power systems, Comet is hiring. If you ask me, uh, you know, my students, I know a couple of them hired by Intel. Um, and Prof. Joe, I guess if somebody asks you, you will say some telecommunication companies. So yes. it depends. But again, I think any, any, any area that you inter are interested in, you will find a company looking for in, in, in those fields. Um, mm -hmm. I think right now they are very in demand. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to add one thing. Last semester, uh, one TA working for uh, ITT course, uh, Ava, she got an intern uh, job in Tesla. So she will start uh, in the summer. Uh -huh. And then for my students, I work in uh, uh, telecommunications. So uh, my student, uh, uh, some of my students are currently working in Apple, Google, uh, Expedia, uh, Qualcomm. Those are the companies uh, they are currently working at. So I think any, any major company um, you will find our students, um, but also I think um, even I, I've seen, not maybe uh, recent graduates, but I've seen also students uh, with, with their startup stuff as well. Uh, so entrepreneurship is also pretty um, you know, exciting. Um, usually that happens a little bit after maybe uh, experience uh, with some graduate degree as well, but it's not unusual. Uh, so IIT students have been you know, part of the startups as well. Uh, so I see a question about uh, the tutoring and classes start. Usually it's a daytime program. Uh, so uh, start from eight and then at five. Usually office hour and then courses are scheduled uh, during this time. 
uh, there have been some uh, modifications in the sense that because of COVID, uh, we started offering every course online, uh, even at you know uh, very early you know undergrad level. Uh, now, of course, next fall we are expecting back to normal, uh, so we will be having in-person classes, etc. So um, I'm not sure if we will keep every option, uh, like online option for every course, um, like before, but we have the mechanism available now. So we learned, a lot. Um, so uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, again, there have been some courses available online um, because of the COVID situation. Um, but for the fall semester, I would expect that uh, in-person uh, you know, teaching will continue. So we will expect, expect to see our students in the class. Any other questions? Uh, did we miss anything? Um, I, I guess I will address all the questions in chats. Um, one thing I would say again, if you have follow up questions, um, again, feel free to reach out to us um, by email. Um, I can put again, uh, my email again here. Uh, so that's my email, um, you can answer. Thank you, Jason. Um, there's a question, Madan, um, what times in the day can you tutor? Um, so I, I'm not sure, this is for professors teaching. Um, so that, again, as Dr. Zhao said, we start to, you know, the, um, the regular uh, lecture start around eight uh, and it goes all the way to maybe five, uh, although there are some later, um, but those are mo for mostly graduate courses. So undergrad usually uh, finishes early. In So I meant there are times in day for tutoring like for uh, act more academic help. I couldn't hear it, unfortunately. Yeah, it kind of broken. breaking out. Can you repeat it, Madam? Or maybe use the chat? I couldn't hear you. Oh. Uh, Kaylin, I think there's a question. Where and when will the recording will be uploaded? Yeah, so we'll send out an email to let you guys know where you can access the recording. And then if you don't see it, just reach out to your admission counselor and we'll get you the resources to see it. Uh, when you say tutoring, what do you mean tutoring? Uh, students teach uh, tutoring the other students. Is that what uh, he's mentioning? Is it office not? hour or like a faculty uh, answer questions? Office hour or courses? Um, if I understand tutoring as students helping other students, um, that certainly happens. Uh, we have, um, what is it called, uh, academic, um, I forgot the name. Uh, but yes, students, uh, they do provide tutors. Uh, for office hours, okay, so office hours, it totally depends on the professor. Uh, so there's no specific time. Um, again, I mean, we try to, I mean, at least person, I try to put at least one of my sessions to lunch break. So, you know, everybody have an option. But it depends. I mean, um, it could be any time from morning till you know late afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, usually, like uh, you know, for office hour, you don't have to make appointment. Uh, so you basically just stop by and then ask questions. Uh, professors will be available. TA will be available. And then if you cannot come to the regular office hour, you can send an email, make an appointment, and then that will based on the availability of you and also the professor. But I have to say also, we are a smaller department and you will see all of us in the same building almost. So just knock on the door. <laughs> um, yeah. And if we are not busy, we will answer. Mm -hmm. So don't be shy. Are there any last minute questions? We have about four minutes left. Um, and while we're wrapping up, I just want to drop a link in the chat for you guys. This is our career outcomes page. So this is data pulled um, through the Office of Career Services. It's uh, self-reported data from our alumni. So you can filter by specific majors to see starting salary, where they end up um, after graduation, what companies are hiring them, where they're going, um, and also if they're continuing their education, what degrees they're pursuing and things like that. So just another resource for you guys to see specifically from our recent alumni, kind of what they're doing. Thanks. That's very useful. Yeah, very yeah, useful that. information. <laughs> yeah, the Office of Career Services just got this website up, I want to say, last summer. So we've been trying to share it with families as much as possible. That's Definitely awesome. a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. 
it looks like there's no more questions. Um, so I just want to take a moment and thank both um, our professors here for presenting fantastic information. Now I wish I could go back and be an undergraduate and study um, electrical or computer engineering. Uh, thank you all for attending and for all of your wonderful questions. If you guys have more questions, you know, feel free to reach out directly to them. You can also reach out to the Office of Admissions if you have admission specific question. May 1st is just around the corner and that's the national decision um, deadline. So if you have questions, you know, definitely utilize your admission counselor. We're here to help. Um, so whether that's questions about finances or just next steps, um, definitely make sure you utilize us as a resource. So thank you guys again so much for attending and have a wonderful Wednesday evening. I almost forgot what day of the week it was. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for attending and I look forward to seeing you in the fall. Yes, in person. We want to see yeah, you. in person, in my class. <laughs>